So uh, today our uh, topic of discussion is uh, Thomas Hardy's uh, The Darkling Thrush, one of the most significant poems by Hardy. So Hardy's uh, The Darkling Thrush, uh, you know, it was written uh, before the turn of the century. Uh, that is uh, uh, just uh, when 19th century was uh, 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 is going to end and a new century that is uh, uh, 20th century that was uh, going to start so it's a uh, uh, it's written in a transitional period uh, between the ending of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century <clears throat> and to commemorate uh, this occasion that is uh, the ending of a uh, century and the beginning of a new century so to commemorate this particular occasion, Hardy composed this poem. And as you know, it is considered to be, uh, uh, as I said, one of the finest poems by Hardy. And uh, it was uh, it was actually titled by by the century's deathbed. So this poem was originally titled uh, by the century's death bed by the century's death bed so it was the original original title of the poem <clears throat> and uh, it was later renamed so this poem uh, as we know it uh, by uh, the name by the title the darkling thrush so this title was uh, actually given later and uh, the poem later published under that title uh, ever since. So it was ever since uh, published with that title. <clears throat> and uh, another thing, uh, uh, just for an information, is that though the poem was written several weeks earlier, but it's still dated 31st December 1900. So this poem is uh, supposed to be composed uh, on a very significant date, that is first, uh, 31st December 1900. So the last uh, day of uh, the 19th century. So a very significant day uh, uh, as the poem was supposed to be written. Though originally the poem was written uh, several weeks earlier. <clears throat> anyway, as it is dated uh, 31st December uh, 1900, a very significant date, and we see that the poem's uh, central idea uh, that uh, very well matches uh, with this uh, particular date, uh, possibly uh, because of that, uh, this uh, particular date uh, that was accepted by uh, the um, the readers uh, possibly because of that that it has a direct connection with the central idea of the poem <clears throat> anyway uh, let us start reading the poem uh, uh, before reading the poem uh, let us concentrate on the title of the poem the darkling thrush so you know uh, thrush that's a kind of a songbird so the darkling, and you know that darkling, it means in the dark, uh, as uh, this word was also uh, there in the poem, uh, the Ode to a Nightingale, darkling I listen. So darkling uh, here also means in the dark. <clears throat> the darkling thrush, so a songbird, which is placed or sitting uh, in darkness. So, a very significant title, a songbird. Uh, so, a songbird that is symbolic of uh, a joyful mood. So, a bird which is associated with uh, the mood of joy, the mood of happiness, uh, the mood of celebration. Uh, so, uh, that uh, kind of a uh, bird is associated with uh, a theme of uh, gloominess, a theme of hopelessness. 
so a bird which is sitting in the dark so a highly contrastive idea is suggested uh, in the uh, in the title so a bird which is symbolic of joy uh, so that idea is contrasted with the very location where the bird is situated so a joyful bird is situated uh, in a location which is completely covered in darkness so that's very interesting uh, to uh, to think that uh, that the uh, that the contrastive ideas how uh, the contrastive ideas are juxtaposed in the title uh, that's very interesting to think that uh, a theme of uh, gloominess a theme of hopelessness is uh, set against uh, set against uh, a theme of hope an idea of hope so uh, uh, here we see that uh, sadness or hopelessness and uh, a hopeful mood both are juxtaposed both are uh, both the ideas are played out by the poet very interestingly very thought -prov -provo uh, provocatively okay so this uh, the very idea that is suggested by the title will be uh, evoked by the poem, by the various uh, images, by the various metaphors uh, that the poet uh, ha has used in the poem. Uh, so let us start reading the poem and uh, we'll try to associate the ideas that are suggested in the poem with uh, the title of the poem as well okay i lent upon a copy's gate uh, so i lent upon a copy's gate uh, you know copies uh, copies means a small wood so the poet is lent upon uh, lent upon uh, here uh, lent uh, this word actually means uh, he is uh, uh, he is uh, standing uh, in a uh, uh, almost uh, in a lying condition uh, so the poet is lent upon a copy's gate okay so the poet is standing upon a small wood uh, uh, a copy's gate that is a small wood so the poet is standing upon a copy's gate when frost was specter gray okay so the poet is uh, inclined uh, upon a uh, copies gate up on a wood when frost or specter gray so uh, it was a frosty night a wintry night as you know that the poem was written uh, in december so it's a winter season so the poet is describing the nature that he is watching outside outside nature so uh, the night uh, it was full of frost the nature was full of frost but the interesting thing is that uh, how the poet uh, describes that frosty night uh, the image uh, or the metaphor that he uh, uses to describe the frosty night is uh, very interesting uh, that uh, specter gray so it is compared with uh, the idea of a uh, of the specter so uh, specter that means uh, a ghost so a kind of ghostly uh, idea is uh, is associated with this uh, uh, with the nature with the wintry nature that the poet is watching so nature the uh, the frosty winter is described with an image which has a ghostly association uh, so a kind of haunting image that the poet is using to describe the night evokes uh, the idea that uh, the night it uh, may be uh, a happy night uh, but for the poet it evokes 
uh, a mood of sadness, a mood of uh, 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 a mood of uh, fear, a mood of anticipation about the future. Okay, so frost was specter gray. Anyway, the winter's dregs made desolate the weakening eye of day. So winter's dregs. So again, uh, a word drag uh, that uh, evokes a kind of negative image. So dregs, that is the last remaining. So here the poet wants to say that the uh, century has just ended. So it's just uh, last remainings. It just drags is there uh, for the poet to watch. So the poet is just watching the last remains of the day. OK, so again, a very dark image is uh, used by the poet. Uh, that is Drake's. OK, so uh, this suggests the undesirable aspect of the century that was uh, going to end. OK. So winter's dregs. Huh? So it may also suggest the fog. Okay, the fog. Um, but at the same time, it evokes a kind of a negative image, pessimistic image. The winter's dregs made desolate, the weakening eye of day. So desolate again, uh, a kind of a uh, uh, negative image, a kind of a. Uh, uh, uh pessimistic image is emphasized uh the may desolate the weakening eye of day okay so uh, the weakening eye of day so that means uh the pale light of the winter sunset though so the sun is just setting and its light uh, is getting play uh, pale so uh the poet says that the weakening eye of the day, that means the pale light of the day, uh, uh, creates uh, a mood of desolation. Okay, desolation, a sense of isolation. So uh, within these four lines, we have a, a several uh, negative images like uh, lent upon. Uh, so here, uh, the word lent uh suggests uh, a kind of a uh, disinterestedness on the part of the poet uh, lack of enthusiasm on the part of the poet and uh, specter gray uh, another uh, negative image dregs desolation uh, and weakening eye that is the pale light of the sunset so uh, we see uh, in four lines there are several negative images uh, which are evoked by the poem the tangled bind stems scored the sky so here uh, uh, the poet feels a kind uh, or experiences a kind of a uh, optic uh, op uh, kind of an optic illusion optic illusion uh, as it was night uh, so the poet is experiencing illusion uh, the sky appears to be scored so scored here means uh, um, uh, spotted okay uh, spotted so sky feels uh, appears to be spotted because he is watching or seeing the sky through the vine stems, OK? So through the creepers, uh, as he was standing uh, within a wood. So he was uh, watching the sky through the creepers. And that's why it creates a kind of, uh, of an optic illusion for the poet. Uh, it The sky appears to be uh, marked with various spots. So again, a negative image is uh, created by the poet. So tangled bind, so tangled bind, so tangled, this word is uh, again emphasizes uh, the negativity. 
tangle. So it uh, may suggest uh, a kind of uh, confusion, a kind of uh, uh, a kind of a condition uh, in which uh, in which the poet is placed, and his uh, complete uh, uh, his confusion, doubts, and his. Uh, uh, puzzlement all these are suggested by this particular word tangled so he is as if tangled uh, within his own uh, thoughts from where he cannot escape so tangled binds them scored the sky so it suggests a kind of a negative image and at the same time it also evokes uh, a ghostly atmosphere so why uh, a kind of a ghostly atmosphere is emphasized uh, uh, because uh, the poet um, considers the century, which is just going to end, uh, as uh, as something uh, uh, as uh, oh, it is it is actually uh, personified by the poet. The century is personified by the poet. And that is why the century is seen by the poet as uh, as uh, dead, as if it is lying before him uh, uh, as a uh, as a dead person. So uh, the theme of death and uh, the theme of uh, uh, supernatural uh, su su theme of the supernatural both are evoked by the poem or various images that the poet is using <clears throat> the tangled uh, bind stems scored the sky like strings of broken lyre so here again uh, a kind of uh, uh, the theme of hopelessness is intensified uh, strings of broken lyre so lyre uh, which is uh, suggestive of uh, uh, something uh, something hopeful, something joyful, uh, because it's a musical instrument, uh, lyre, but its strings are broken. So again, uh, a contrasted image uh, that is uh, a, a valiant uh, search of hope uh, against uh, or in the face of over uh over um, or all pervading uh, gloominess okay so a kind of a valiant but at the same time failing attempt to uh, find hope in the face of that is against uh, uh, all pervading gloominess inescapable uh, gloominess so that is the central idea of the poem. Okay. Uh, like strings of broken lyre and all mankind that haunted nine had sought their household fires. So the poet is, uh, the poet feels that he is completely separated, isolated from the uh, from all other people all are merry making all are enjoying uh, the christmas or they are uh, all merry making uh, on the hope of a new year so they are all uh, enjoying their household lives they are all um, enjoying a kind of a secure lives but it is only the poet who is staying outside. So uh, the poet feels completely isolated. OK, so a theme of isolation is here suggested. Uh, the poet feels that uh, all, mind, uh, all mankind that haunted nine. So here nine means uh, nearby, that is uh, all his neighborhood who are haunted, that means who uh, are uh, who are living near so here uh, the word very word haunted is used by the poet with a 
particular purpose that uh, that we know that uh, its purpose is to uh, evoke the uh, ghostly image okay so all mankind that haunted nigh had sought their household fires so they have all sought their household fires so here household fires uh, uh, it, it is metaphorically uh, used uh, to suggest uh, domestic comfort uh the material luxury so all the people they are engrossed with material uh, luxury enjoyment but it is only the poet who is uh who is um, engrossed with with thought so uh, uh, the material uh, life and uh the poet's uh, world of uh, world of imagination so these are also contrasted so this particular uh, characteristic of the poet this particular nature of the poet makes him isolated from the other people as he is a poet his uh, task is to to think uh, or to ponder over the uh, each and every incident uh, that is happening uh, before his eyes so it is his duty to think over it but the other people they are all busy with uh, mundane things so that creates a kind of an isolation uh, and at the same time a kind of a individualism on the part of the poet as he is thinking something which cannot be shared with others because it is his own personal and very individual thinking that may not be uh, uh, very common or may not be experienced by other people so this is his own understanding his own uh, realization about the century that is about to end and the century that is uh, just coming <clears throat> so it is his uh, individual uh, appreciation okay realization so had sought their household fires the land sharp features seem to be the centuries corpse outland sharp features so sharp features again uh, that suggest uh, a kind of a, a ghostly mood uh the land sharp features so uh, the uh, the nature its its beauty is described but at the same time a kind of uh ominousness is also suggested by the dark images uh, which are there in the poem the land sharp features seem to be the century's corpse out length so here the century the 19th century is personified as a dead body a corpse that is outlined so that is just lying there so here we see that uh, the poet uh, is uh, describing and personifying the century okay as if it uh, it were on its death bed so as if it is dead and lying on its death bed okay so centuries corpse out length he scraped the can uh, cloudy canopy so he's uh, he's he's means the century as it is personified that is why it is referred to as uh, with this pronoun he uh, he is he scraped the cloudy canopy so the cloudy sky that seems to be the vaulted roof over the corpse of the 19th century so the 19th century that is lying uh, like dead like a dead body like a corpse and the cloudy sky that is here described as a cloudy canopy so here canopy actually means sky so the cloudy canopy that uh, that appears to be the crypt that is the uh, that is the vaulted roof or the tomb okay 
so the sky appears to be uh, uh, a tomb a vaulted room over the corpse of the 19th century so um, uh, as uh, it was uh, it was dark night so the poet imagines that or the sky appears uh, as a tomb uh, which is created uh, to commemorate the uh, the 19th century that is just about to end so the century that has just died uh, and to commemorate it or to pay tribute to it and the nature has created a tomb okay and the sky is here conceived as the tomb uh, that appears to be a vaulted roof for the poet okay that is why the poet says that uh, the centuries corpse outlined he stripped the cloudy canopy that is uh, his tomb is the cloudy canopy that is the cloudy can canopy is the tomb of that uh, century uh, or the dead body of that century that is lying there in front of the poet the wind his death lament so uh, uh, a funeral image is uh, evoked by the poet as if the new, uh, wind is uh, functioning as the uh, funeral song for the uh, for the century that has just ended the ancient pulse of charm and birth was shrunken hard and dry so uh, a very poetic uh, line uh, that is uh, uh, written by the poet here so here it suggests that uh, the everything that is uh, that is symbolic of joy and merriment uh, are completely um, uh, are completely uh, dead for the poet okay the ancient pulse of charm so here charm actually means uh, inspiration charm here actually means inspiration so the poet does not find any kind of inspiration uh, which is there in nature because uh, everything uh, that he watches evokes uh, a mood of gloominess so there is nothing in nature that can suggest uh, a kind of a hope okay uh, as for the romantic poets we see that nature always uh, evoked uh, a sense of joy a sense of uh, divine uh, uh, pleasure for the poet but here we see that the nature is um, full of haunting uh, ideas so the nature uh, uh, creates fear on the mind of the poet and uh, there it is full of uh, ominous signs it is full of uh, uh, full of uh, uh, many uh, images which are uh, indicative of something uh, highly negative something destructive okay that is very uh, uh, that uh, that actually makes the poem uh, different from the uh, romantic poetry uh, as you know uh, the poem is written on the transitional period uh, so it actually uh, defines or uh, or maybe <clears throat> uh, introducing uh, a new genre of poetry which was uh, later uh, conceived as or uh, referred to as modern poetry anyway uh, <clears throat> the wind his death lament the ancient pulse of charm and birth was shrunken hard and dry so a highly pessimistic idea is suggested here so as the poet uh, cannot find anything that is suggestive of uh, positive you know, something positive 
and that is why he thinks that his mind uh, becomes full of despair and uh, he feels that uh, as if all the source of life uh, are totally uh, are totally uh, uh, died out okay that's completely died out all source of hope all source of inspiration uh, have totally died out the ancient pulse of germ and birth was shrunken hard and dry so shrunken hard and dry so that means it is completely uh, gone so there is no state of hope there is no uh, hope of any kind of inspiration um, that the poet can find uh, uh, anywhere the uh, and every spirit upon earth seemed fervorless as i so the poet feels fervorless okay uh, so uh, again that uh, the theme of isolation is suggested the poet feels fervorless so completely uh, lifeless completely without any excitement okay so uh, uh, like uh, as he said just uh, in the previous line that all source of inspiration are gone uh, that is why he feels completely fervorless okay that is lifeless mm -hmm. so he's just a fervorless observer to the dying century so he not just the century but he is himself uh, uh, without uh, any excitement okay so here we see that the line is marked with a sense of despair and loss of hope for uh, the future uh, of the uh, mankind so the poet is highly concerned uh, uh, with the future of humanity in the new century, during the new century. And that is why he feels completely isolated from those people who have just uh, sought their household lives, that is, who are just enjoying uh, their material lives and completely unconcerned, uh, indifferent about uh, the things uh, which the poet thinks uh, very much significant. Okay. <clears throat> so we uh, here we see that the all um, uh, dark images. Uh, negative uh, ideas are suggested uh, in all the lines that we have just read. Now, uh, in the next stanza, uh, there will be a turn of thought. Uh, so here the poet says that, at once a voice arose. So this uh, stanza uh, is set against the previous stanzas, which only evokes uh, the thought of hopelessness, the thought of negativity, the thought of pessimism, uh, the thought of uh, death. Uh, so that idea, that mood is undercut by the following stanza where suddenly the poet uh, discovers uh, a bard. At once a voice rose among the bleak twig overhead. So a voice that is the um, voice of the bard, that is a song of the bard, uh, the poet suddenly uh, discovered uh, the song of a bard, which is uh, uh, the bard which is uh, sitting uh, in the twigs, up on the twigs. But the twigs here described as bleak, so again, a dark image. So the bird is sitting uh, on the twigs, which is 
covered with darkness. Okay, so here the poet and the bard are almost in the similar condition. The bard is a song bard, uh, as you know, and the poet, uh, he, uh, he also writes song, that is poetry. So both are creative, uh, uh, both are imaginative. Uh, so uh, their task is to create something that is joyful. But it is a challenge for the poet, uh, as well as for the bard, to create something joyful uh, while uh, they are completely, uh, uh, completely uh, 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 situated in a place which is full of darkness, where there is no hope for inspiration. So in a completely gloomy uh, uh, situation, they have to uh, create something that may uh, bring message of hope for the uh, people of the world. So that's a very difficult task. So here we see that the poet is not taking that responsibility of uh, suggesting some hope for the people of the world uh, as he is full of despair. And that is why he creates uh, or uh, brings this idea of a bard. So here the bard actually uh, functions as the voice of the poet. Okay, but he is actually shifting his own responsibility um, to the bard. So, uh, so that the readers uh, cannot uh, accuse the poet that he is uh, suggesting a hope or uh, conveying a kind of a hope which is not actually real. So the poet is trying to uh, free himself from any kind of accusation. Okay, so he is not taking that responsibility of uh, conveying any kind of hope as he personally feels that there is no hope for mankind in the coming century, and which is also proved true. But uh, as he is a poet, he cannot completely leave his readers uh, with an uh, utter sense of negativity. And that's why, that's why he brings this uh, idea of a bard, which is uh, uh, made symbolic of uh, a kind of a hope uh, against all odds, okay? Uh, a kind of uh, valiant attempt to find hope in the face of, uh, as I said, all pervading luminous. So at once, bar arrows in the bleak weeks overhead, uh, and um, Someone's is on. Okay. Uh, so at once a voice arose among the bleak twigs overhead in a full hearted even song. So even song means evening song of joy illimited. Illimited means unlimited. So the bard uh, seems to produce a kind of a uh, song uh, which uh, uh, evokes a sense of joy, extreme sense of joy, and the bard is singing um, uh, spontaneously without any uh, effort, effortlessly in a full-hearted even song uh, of joy illimited. So as if the bard is full of joy, its joy is unlimited. But again, uh, in the following lines, uh, the poet create some negative images to describe the bard and aged thrush. So uh, it is not that the bard, uh, just because the bard is creating beautiful song, joyful song, that it is uh, its appearance is also uh, uh, very energetic 
uh, or highly graceful. But here we see that its appearance uh, again uh, contrasts with uh, the song that it, it is singing. So again, uh, uh, a sense of hope is set against an utter uh, sense of hopelessness. So um, uh, it, uh, it also suggests a kind of a valiant attempt, okay, a strained hope against all negativity. Uh, An aged thrush, so the bird is uh, very weak, aged, frail, gaunt, and small. So uh, uh, several uh, uh, adjectives that the poet used uh, to describe the bard are all uh, suggestive of uh, uh, lack of energy, lack of life. In blast beruffled plume, so its plumes, its feathers are blast uh, beruffled. So it's completely in a, uh, it's completely exhausted, worried, uh, and uh, uh, because of the icy wind of the winter, its feathers are completely beruffled. Uh, uh, that means uh, they are in highly uh, disordered condition. Okay. Uh, so the bard's appearance uh, denies any uh, sense of hope, any sense of positiveness. Uh, but uh, the song it creates creates uh, creates uh, evokes a mood of joy. Okay, that is the very interesting uh, 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 side of the bird. So blast beautiful plume had chosen thus to fling his soul. So as if it has just opened up its soul. So uh, uh, again, a very significant word fling is used uh, to suggest a, a very small uh, monosyllabic word, but uh, uh, that uh, creates a very powerful uh, idea. Uh, as if it has just opened up its soul upon the growing gloom. So uh, maybe that should be the uh, task of any poet, because a poet's, uh, poet's task is to uh, sustain hope, sustain hope against all odds, against all negativity. Uh, so the poet, as he is, uh, his personal life, uh, life was also highly disturbed, and uh, various other incidents and uh, uh, social and political condition and uh, economic condition, everything uh, that uh, that having a, an effect upon the mind of the poet. And that is why he cannot uh, think, or uh, sorry, uh, cannot create uh, something hopeful uh, for the uh, for the people of the world because uh, the new century is just coming uh, is uh, going to start. So he should write something about the new century and convey some hope for the people of the world. As he is a poet, it is his task to sustain hope, but. Uh, he fails to do so because when he is uh, in close uh, association with nature, when he is in the woods, uh, though he was uh, uh, trying to find out something in nature that may uh, offer some kind of hope, but uh, he finds that it only uh, evokes the idea of uh, gloominess, despair, uh, isolation, uh, hopelessness. So here the bard uh, is used by the poet as symbolic of a kind of a strained hope. Okay, so here the bard is conveying the message of hope, not the poet. So a kind of a, uh, what should I say? Uh, um, uh, a kind of a disguise that the poet is here uh, taking, a kind of a 
uh, camouflage that the poet is taking, that he is not taking the responsibility and he is uh, shifting his own responsibility upon the bard, that you should tell the people uh, of the world about the, uh, uh, about the hope that the new century uh, may bring, but I will not take that responsibility. <clears throat> So little cause for carolings of such aesthetic sound. So the poet feels that there is no cause for uh, such kind of joy. Because whatever he sees are uh, just evoking dark uh, ideas, gloominess. Was written on terrestrial things afar or nigh around. So whether uh, near or far, there are nothing uh, 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 that can suggest hope was written on terrestrial things. Okay. That means uh, mundane things or uh, worldly things. Okay. So the poet uh, uh, finds nothing in the, uh, in the nature or in his surroundings that may uh, suggest hope. That I could think they are trembled through his happy good night air. So the poet uh, is uh, very much surprised uh, to listen to such a beautiful song because he thinks that there is nothing in, in the surroundings that may uh, excite the bard to create such a beautiful song because there is nothing in nature that is hopeful that may make the poet or the bard. Uh, hopeful about the future. So this creates uh, uh, a kind of a surprise on the part of the poet and uh, some blessed hope. Okay, whereof he knew and I was unaware. Okay, so the poet says that uh, possibly the bard is aware of uh, some kind of hope. Uh, about the future, but the poet is himself completely uh, unaware of that. Okay, so a sense of hope against all odds that is suggested in the poem, but with the help of dark images which is very much apparent throughout the poem, uh, emphasizes the fact that uh, the hope that the bard is uh, suggesting uh, may not be true, uh, may not be real. So the poet doubts about uh, the, uh, the joyful mood of the bard and he transfers his doubts upon the readers too. Okay, so this sense of doubt is very typical of modern poetry. Uh, so in that sense, we can say that this poem uh, uh, actually pioneers uh, uh, modern poetry or uh, the poetry of the early 20th century. <clears throat> And the last lines, as uh, we have just read here, uh, again, as I said, that uh, uh, it suggests that uh, in the uh, in the face of despair, in the face of uh, complete uh, gloominess, uh, one can find hope. But the problem is here is that this hope is not like uh, the hope as it was suggested in the romantic poetry. Okay, here a sense of hope is evoked, but at the same time, it is uh, undercut by the dark images. Okay, so a sense of doubt and fear uh, is uh purposefully is purposefully 
attached with uh, uh, a sense of hope. So that is very interesting thing about uh, feature of the poem that makes it very unique. And it actually, uh, by this, it's very technique, it sets the, uh, the tone or the uh, sets the mood of the modern poetry. Because we know that modern poetry, uh, uh, yeah, similarly, uh, creates uh, a sense of doubt, a sense of uncertainty about life, about future, and the theme of uh, theme of despair, theme of doubt, uh, theme of hopelessness, the theme of uh, the separation from the past and the present. So these are all uh, uh, very significant ideas which are associated with modern poetry. So uh, in that sense, uh, we see that this poem is very significant <clears throat> because it typically uh, evokes uh, some very significant uh, features uh, which define modern poetry. <clears throat> anyway, uh, now uh, you can ask any questions. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask. Um, Sir, Fling, fling. Fling, fling. Fling, fling. To throw away. Huh? To throw away. Hmm. Uh, to, set, uh, to set free. The key to say, the the bard has just uh, set its soul free. Huh? Hmm. You know, she needs to be মানে যেটা যেটা পোয়েট পারছেন না মানে গেল তাহলে পোয়েটের মধ্যে যে একটা যে ইনএবিলিটি রয়েছে সেটা দেখা যাচ্ছে যে পোয়েট কিন্তু কোনোভাবেই নিজেকে যে হি ক্যান নট কমপ্লিটলি ওপেন আপ হিজ হার্ট এন্ড ওয়েলকাম দা নিউ সেঞ্চুরি উইথ গ্রেট জয় বাট দা এক্সেপশন ইজ দা অনলি এক্সেপশন ইজ uh, this uh, particular bard. They have to say, Oro into a condition to Akirakum, when economic dictionary bard to say, such a blast be ruffled, Tarje feathers glue shamusto, uh, she will be ruffled, Hoyache, Maneo, they are all raised with the uh, icy wind, the Mushaka and the Hache, Och, aged, frail, weak, mm. exhausted, Taladakache, Ormote, Amun Kichune. Uh, jeta okay uh, at a hello kitchu at a positive kitchu bhapte shahad jokorbe hello is a good interesting j pakita monte amon kono boishish to nay amon kono quality nay jeta okay help korbe uh, positive kitchu chinta korte to tashato korte is a good interesting hello uh, jeta hmm. poet ke vishon rakum bhabhe je uh, je affect kore chhe poet ke bhab aache yung tokhon poet ki kore chen je tini taa responsibility ta baadhi rapur dhe di chen tini dhek chen je aami kono dai ne bona aami bol bona je uh, agami dine uh, je century ta aas chhe sheta kub bhalo habhe uh, just like jeta ke bale hoch chhe je kaar uh, uh, microphone ta bar bar on hoch chhe ta ikhto bondo kore bhe তাহলে কি হচ্ছে যে মানে পোয়েট যেটা বলতে চাইছেন যে আমি সেই দায়টা নেব না যেটা আমরা সাধারণত দেখি রোমান্টিক পোয়েট্রিতে হয়ে থাকে বা যেটাকে আমরা বলি যে যেটাকে বলে প্লাটি প্লাটিটিউড প্লাটিটিউড মানে হচ্ছে যে এমন কিছু কথা যে কথাগুলো আসলে কোনো মানে নেই কিন্তু আমরা বলি এবং সেগুলো বললে মানুষ খুব খুশি হয় বুঝে গেল যে আমাদের সামনে খুব সুদিন আসবে আমরা এই দুঃখ জয় করে একদিন আমরা সবাই 
আহ এগিয়ে চলবো আহ বোঝা গেল দেশ এগোবে আহ ভারত এগোবে এরকম আমরা যে বলি আর কি যে কথাগুলো আহ এই যে কথাগুলো এগুলো আমরা জানি যে এগুলো আসলে কোনো মানে নেই কিন্তু যখন বলা হয় তখন হয় কি যে যে মানুষ খুশি হয় এটাকে বলা হয় প্লাটিটিউড পলিটিশিয়ানসরাই প্লাটিটিউড ইউজ করে তো কি হচ্ছে যে এবার রোমান্টিক পয়েন্ট অনেক সময় দেখা যায় যে তারা এই ধরনের হোপের কথা বলেন কিন্তু এখানে আমরা দেখব যে হার্ডিও একটা হোপের কথা বললেন কিন্তু যেই আসার কথাটা তিনি বললেন সেটার প্রতি আবার একটা সন্দেহ তৈরি করে দিলেন বোঝা গেল রোমান্টিক পয়েট্রি কি করে যে একটা শেষের দিকে একটা দেখা যায় যে একটা একটা জয়ফুল মুডের কথা একটা মেসেজ সে দেয় সবসময় পজিটিভ মেসেজ সে তৈরি করে কিন্তু এখানে আমরা দেখব যে পয়েট কিন্তু একটা ডাউটস তৈরি করে দিয়ে গেল সেটা খুব ইন্টারেস্টিং যেটা হচ্ছে যে আমি যেটা বলছিলাম যে মডার্ন ফিচার অফ যে পয়েট্রি এখানে দেখা যায় যে কোনো কিছুকেই খুব একটা বেশি আহ হোপফুলি রিপ্রেজেন্ট করা হয় না সেটাকে আন্ডার কাট করা হয় বারবার যেটা এখানেও আমরা দেখলাম এবং তিনি কি করলেন যে তিনি নিজেও কিন্তু রেসপন্সিবিলিটি নিচ্ছেন না পুরোটাই তিনি বার্ডের উপরে চাপিয়ে দিচ্ছেন যে ও হয়তো কোথাও কিছু জানতে পেরেছে বা দেখতে পেয়েছে কোনো সাইন যেটা দেখে ওর মনে আনন্দ হয়েছে কিন্তু আমি সেরকম কিছু দেখতে পাচ্ছি না হুম যা ফলে পয়েট পুরোপুরি ভাবে ডিনাই করলেন যে যে দেয়ার ইজ স্টিল দেয়ার ইজ সাম হোপ ফর দ্য নিউ ফিউচার নিউ সেঞ্চুরি কিন্তু এখানে তিনি কি করলেন যে সে পাখিটাকে দিয়ে সে কথাটা বলালেন সে মেসেজটা দেয়ালেন কিন্তু নিজেই আবার বলছেন যে কিন্তু আমি সেই ধরনের কোনো সাইন দেখতে পাচ্ছি না তার মানে তিনি কি করলেন যে একটা ডাউট তৈরি করলেন রিডারদের মধ্যে যে যে আদৌ সেরকম কিছু হতে পারে কি পারে না হম আচ্ছা বলো আর কার কি প্রশ্ন আছে लाइफ the source of enthusiasm inspiration all are uh, completely dead eta poet er mone hocche ha eta poet ar ki assume korchen je the it appears for the poet uh, that all uh, source of ho- hope all source of uh, life are completely uh, wiped out যেটা কবির মনে হচ্ছে যে কোথাও কিছু নেই এবং যেন এভরিথিং হ্যাজ জাস্ট সিজ টু এক্সিস্ট সবকিছুই যেন মানে মৃত হয়ে গেছে কবির এটা মনে হচ্ছে যেন তিনি বলছেন অ্যান্সিয়েন্ট পালস অফ জার্ম দ্যাট ইজ ইন্সপিরেশন অ্যান্সিয়েন্ট পালস অফ জার্ম অ্যান্ড পার্থ অ্যান্সিয়েন্ট বলছেন যে এই কারণে তার মনে হচ্ছে যে from the ancient age uh, from the uh, 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 ancient age bolte je bola jete pare je he actually refers to uh, the time when uh, uh, when a life uh, actually uh, created on earth bujhe gelo thik sei samoy theke jokhon mane praner srishti hoyeche tale sei samoy theke যে সময় থেকে প্রাণ সৃষ্টি হয়েছে যে সময় থেকে যে মানে জীবের সৃষ্টি হয়েছে মানে সেই সময় থেকে এই যে জীবের বা যে তার যে চলন সেটা সম্পূর্ণ রকম ভাবে স্টপড হয়ে গেছে নাইনটিন সেঞ্চুরিতে তার মনে হচ্ছে আর নতুন করে কোনো প্রাণের সঞ্চার আর হবে না বুঝে গেল যে যদি হয়ও যে পিপুল উইল জাস্ট লিভ লাইক ডেড ম্যান হম যে মানে একটা ভীষণ রকম পেসিমিস্টিক একটা ধারণা যেটা আমরা 
ওই জোসেফ কনরাডের যে হার্ট অফ ডার্কনেস যেটা আমরা পাই সেরকম ধরনের যে একটা হোপলেসনেস যে যে মানুষের মধ্যে হোপ জয় তার মধ্যে যে যে যা কিছু পজিটিভ যে কোয়ালিটিস এগুলো আর থাকবে না হ্যাঁ যে হয়তো সব কিছুই কি হয়ে যাবে যে দে উইল জাস্ট বিকাম মেশিনস কারণ আমরা জানি যে সেই ধারণা গুলো কিন্তু এখানে রয়েছে এবং সেটা আমরা দেখবো যে মডার্ন পিরিয়ড সেই ভাবনাটা আরো বেশি প্রকট হচ্ছে সেই ধারণাটাকে তিনি বলছেন যে সেই সেই সময় থেকে যখন থেকে প্রাণ সৃষ্টি হচ্ছে সেই সময় থেকে কি মনে হচ্ছে যেন যে এই নাইনটিন সেঞ্চুরিতে এসে মানে দ্যাট সোর্স অফ লাইফ এস কমপ্লিটলি সিজ টু এক্সিস্ট আর আর কোনো নতুন জীবন আর সৃষ্টি হবে না এটা কবির মনে হচ্ছে তার ধারণা হুম ওকে স্যার হ্যাঁ আচ্ছা ঠিক আছে আর কারোর কোন প্রশ্ন আছে নেই ঠিক আছে তাহলে আজকে এটুকুই থাক নেক্সট দিন আমরা আবার কি পড়বো সেটা আমি জানিয়ে দেবো ঠিক আছে গুড নাইট হুম থ্যাংক